What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Leveled Up Life podcast. As always, Brandon Mir Courtney here with Paul McLean. What's my up, main man? Glad to be here. You. I'm glad to be here with you, man. We're trying to help people level up their life in all the areas that matter most, their faith, their family, fitness, finance, and franchise. Just trying to help people get better, man, each and every day in this wild, crazy world that we live in. We want to help you. It's. I was thinking about this earlier. Um, it, it's. A, I don't know when this is going to air, right? But there's a lot of division in our country, a lot of back and forth, a lot of like, you know, uh, what's going to happen if this person gets elected or this person gets an office and just all this like what if kind of stuff. And I was thinking about the only one thing that we can truly control is ourselves. Yep. I do. It don't matter who's the president is, who's the mayor, who's all who. None of that stuff. If you really boil it down to like we can make a decision ourselves to, to make change, to level up, to get better, to grow, to get smarter, to work harder, to all the stuff. It's on us. Yep. And so that's our heart and our goal is to help you level up your life. And so you don't have to depend on the government or your boss or, or external factors, because the truth is God's given you everything that you need to accomplish the life that he's called you to live. And so that's what we try to do every single That week, was man. good, dude. I, I, dude I had that, that was my one thought for today. Tune in next week. Uh, yeah, I like it, man. That was, that, that's spot on, man. And I think at the end of the day, that that's absolutely right. In fact, 100%. you know, I, even with the, the soccer team I coach, like before the game, because their mind could be all distracted, right? And I think even with like, to your point with the, the politics and just the stuff that's going on day to day, yeah. it's so easy to get pulled into things that are outside of our control, get emotional about things out of our control and emotion leads to motion. So now your, your day and what you do each day is really dependent and, and derived and birthed out of this emotion yep. from something you couldn't even control, right? And so I always say, hey, attitude and activity, those are the two things that we have control over. What are you gonna do today? What work are you gonna put in? And does that work matter? And then what attitude are you gonna have, right? And, and attitude, a lot of that's just the patience when you're going after something, it's, it's the attitude you keep while you wait for the progress to show up from the process that you're enduring. That's good. And I think when you don't do that, man, it's just like now you're just kind of floundering. And uh, today, I just want to tell you, share this right now because it's going to make a big difference. What we're going to talk about is one of those things. Sometimes we'll find a topic that actually resonates across all the five Fs, right? Yeah. Like this impacts all the five Fs. And I want to kind of first start off with debunking this, this, like, this bad rep on sales, right? Because yeah. some people are like, I'm not a sales guy. I don't want to be a salesperson. And it's like, you are a salesperson. And if you think that, you probably suck at it. And if you suck at it, you ain't influencing your family, your business, your community, anybody that you're intended to you know, influence. Yep. Because you know, sales is really just a, a transfer of thoughts and ideas where the other person starts to kind of see it in the way that you see it. Maybe they, they are able to, to uncover, unmask, and, and find out some of these blind spots that they've had. And now they can move forward, right, with a partnership or relationship where value has been transacted, yep. value has been, been you know, passed along. And and I want to say this, Brent, because um, it made me think about this. Like when you said the, the politics, like there's such a division because nobody's kind of like they're just set, set in their own ways. It's like the perfect example of terrible sales, right? And the reality is if, if there's more – of this third option, like not option one, option two, there's a third option. The third right. option is like, how can we connect and relate? And then maybe we can go through some stuff. Now, I'm not saying that one party is all of a sudden going to be able to believe that the other party is right or what have you, but but having the ability to communicate and connect in such a way where the person is open to hearing something. Yeah. I think when you look at that, there's some people that are open-minded, but then you got some people, dude, they're so steady. It don't matter what you say. No, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what the other person does or doesn't do or what they say or don't say. Like, it, it doesn't matter. They could kidnap your kid and you're still like, I'm in, right? <laughs> like, it was for a good cause, right? You know, and so I think that really what we're going to pack today is being able to, for one, find the third option in every kind of conversation that you're connecting with people on. So if they have a different thought process or perspective or what have you, you're able to kind of lead, guide, and direct them where they can see it maybe in a way that they didn't see it before. And now because they see it, they view it different, they do it different, meaning that their next steps are different. And um, let's talk about this though. The first, the first thing I believe in order to sell, right, is the most important sell, the greatest sell, is a sell of yourself, Yeah. right? Selling yourself on who you are, what you stand for, what you believe about yourself. And that's something that we do every single day, right? We're, we're being influenced by two different voices in our mind. We're being influenced to, to, to this other version of ourselves, this different identity. And so kind of talk about like, you know, how do you sell yourself each day to go out there and be the best version of yourself? That's good. So, so I was thinking about just, I got bought a car recently, right? And so I go to the dealership and I'm walking in and dude, this dude, he didn't have bad breath. He had commission breath. 
all over him, <laughs> right? And the, from the moment I stepped through the door, he, I mean, he, he was he was trying to do his job. Like, and, and I'm familiar with the game, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like he come and he's trying to build rapport and he's trying to make all these weird like compliments to me that have it's not related to what we're talking about at all. And he's going on and on. I'm just like, dude, get to the point, bro. Like, I, like I'm not just like some dude off the street. Like, I understand psychology and like what you're trying to get to. So right. just get there. And, dude, it turned me off in such a bad way that I asked for his manager because I was like, dude, you're just playing games. Like, who's who's the next level in charge? Because it wasn't – it was almost as if, as if he wasn't genuine, mm-hmm. right? And, and when you're just, like, speaking or, or or selling something and the motives are messed up – because I think it starts with motives, right? When, when yeah. we're talking about, like, a, a transfer of thought or a transfer of, like, you're trying to sell something or idea, it's like what's the motive behind mm-hmm. what you're trying to convince the person of? Well, he was just trying to get a paycheck as opposed to really put me in the best position to buy a car, which I probably would have been easier when I negotiated with the guy. But because his motives were messed up and it was so clear to me, like I was a jerk back to him almost in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but that's another subject for another day. When it comes to selling myself, man, it's really just like, number one, I think that um, it, it's hard to sell yourself when you don't, when you don't know who you are. And so once you have a real understanding of what you stand for, what your values are, what you believe, uh, uh, what your morals are, what your character is, what your identity is. So, establishing all those things first and say, Hey, this is who I am. So that way, when I'm out of character, when I'm out of like, dude, this ain't, this ain't Brandomir. Brandomir is not a grump. Brandomir is not uh, a jerk. He's not that. So then I, I have a roadmap to get back to. So I, number one, I think it's identifying like, Hey, who, who has God created me to be? Yeah. And, and so for me, um, a, a lot of it has to do with really just taking time to reflect and go, Hey, over the last like week, two weeks, year, what version of myself did I like the most? And how could I be more that person? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, um, that's good, dude. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think you gotta have a strong conviction of what you believe in. Like once you're sold on something, once you, once you know the value that you can bring to other people, to other people, then it's like, you ever talk to someone and they're just like, they're so sold out on their idea, their mm-hmm. business, their thought, their dream. And you're like, dude, that I might not be convinced, but that dude's convinced right. on what he's selling. Mm-hmm. So, so I think you got to get to that point when it comes to like who you are, and then other people are just attracted to that because you're like, man, that guy's so secure. He's not insecure. He's not looking for compliments. He's not looking for um, t- to be the loudest voice in the room because yeah. he's just like there's a there's like an aura that someone carries when they know who they are, mm-hmm. and it's attractive to people. You know, that's so good. Man. And so I think for me, <clears throat> I, I've been in constant pursuit because we wear many different hats, right? So yeah. like. As a pastor, as a dad, as a business leader, as a friend, I think over time I've been invo- evolving like, hey, who who am I as a pastor? So I'm three years into senior pastoring. Yeah. So I'm still figuring out like who, who am I? What's my voice? What's my lane? What's my what's my identity like as that role? So it's it's been evolving over time. And I think like I, I listen to a lot of pastors and, and they say like a, a pastor takes about seven years to find his own voice. Because typically what happens is you mimic or you act like or you talk like or you lead like those who you're following. Sure. And then after doing it for a long enough period of time, you're like, all right, this is who I am. I've kind of chiseled off the fat. Now this is who God's created me to be. So I think uh, it's okay to be in process of like figuring out who you are in many different areas. But I think once you have a real understanding of who you are, man, it's it's attractive. Dude, that's so good. And I think just to to make up – to add to that point, dude, for anybody that's on here – that's looking to go and create something, right? You know, you got, I think it's good to find somebody that you're like, I really kind of like what they resemble. I like the values that they hold. I like how they communicate. I like what they do and really start following that person, right? And it, it's not a bad you know, thing to, to kind of emulate what they're doing and their thought process and how they see it. And you're exactly right. Over a period of time, for one, now you start to, to develop yourself and then through experiences, yeah. right? You start to say, okay, this is how I am. This is who I am. And so I think that's a, a big, big deal. Um, conviction, you said it, man, that, that's it. It's how do you build the right conviction? Right. And this goes to both sides. Like sometimes you don't have to even believe that the person, what they're saying is true. Like you, you're like, I don't know if I believe you, but because I, I believe that you believe it, yeah. I'm more attracted to that. 100%. And so that's the power of conviction is sometimes a person might not even believe 
what you're selling right or, or the thought process you've got but dude if your conviction is so great they're almost moved and attracted because like dude, that guy believes what he believes right yeah. he, he i'm certain that he does and so no different than when you're talking to somebody it could be in anything right so for you that are not in sales um like an actual sales job you're married if you've got kids if you have friends whatever that is whoever is most convicted or believes more what they're saying is going to win. It's like the weight of belief. 100%. Whatever one's going to be greater is going to tip the scale. And I think to unpack that with the greatest sell being me, you, like, you know, you on here selling yourself, it's like everything you do, you're casting votes for that person, right? And so if we look at the election, like whoever has the most votes is going to win, right? Regardless Maybe. of regardless of they're <laughs> accurate or not, right? <laughs> but, but depends who you ask. <laughs> but typically, that's yeah, the way yeah, it's yeah. supposed to work. Yeah. But the one thing is, it definitely works for you, right? And so, if you've got a couple different identities, whatever identity gets the most votes yeah. that day, that person is going to be the one that shows up. That that conviction is going to be there. And so, really, you got to step back. And I think what you said was spot on, Brand. Like being aware. Like, who do I want to be? What does the next level version of myself look like? What's the best version of me as a husband? Like, what would be ideally like the husband that I want to be or the spouse that I want to be? What would be the ideal business person? What kind of leader do I want to be in my organization? What kind of salesperson do I want to be? If I'm selling something, whether it's a house, insurance or whatever, what kind of person do I want to be? Do I want to be the person that's integrous, that puts the person first, that values people, that exceeds expectation? And then you sit back in a pack and say, okay, what can I do? today that's going to cast a vote for that person right and then as you cast those votes before you know it that person just seems to show up yep right that person's the one that shows up so so conviction is crucial what i would always say um you know when it comes to like yourself for one you have to know like what god says about you yeah right because then it's very difficult but if you know the truth and you're and you're cemented in the truth. You're rooted in the truth. Then when things pop up, little voices that don't line up with that truth, well, then you can spot it. It's like a red flag. Like, all right, let me delete that. And that way, it doesn't ever take root. And now all of a sudden, you've got a thought process and a pattern that's really built on a lie about who you are. Because God created you with greatness. He put seeds in you. You don't want to put dirt on those seeds by believing this lie. So if you're more aware and cognizant of the truth, you're right. more you're more alert to say, all right, delete that. That ain't a part of who I am. Now let me ask myself, who do I need to be? Well, I need to be disciplined. I'm a disciplined person. Well, what does a disciplined person do? I make this phone call right now, opposed to going out, going and taking another snack break or whatever it is, right? Like I got to do this. And I think that's- Well, I think number one, a couple of things, that's why it's so important to have like community around you. Like I was talking to someone earlier today and he said like, man, I was, I was in a funk. I was going through it. I was in my head. I was messed up. But when I got around a community that can pull the truth out of, out of me that I don't see or feel in the moment mm -hmm. and like remind me of how God created me to be like, dude, that's so important. I think m a lot of people are missing that because what happens is you get around people who are like you, who think like you, who are in the same similar, you know, uh, life circumstances you and that every your, your dysfunction just seems kind of normal, but it's good to have some like people ahead of you or above you when it comes to like, you know, leadership or spirituality or business that could, that could, you give them permission to speak into your life and, and pull those things out of you. I know it's so, so important for me because we all can get in our own head. Yeah. We all can get messed up. So number one, having community around you is, is crucial. But number two, I think um, Pastor Craig Rochelle said it, says it so good. We underestimate the what what good small decisions done every day over a long period of time, like how big of an impact that actually yeah. has. So you think like it's just a one little decision, like make this one phone call as opposed to get that snack. But really that one good decision done every day, like the impact that act, that actually has, you can't even quantify it because it's just like, this is not, this now becomes who I am. So yeah. I am the disciplined person that does what I need to do as opposed to submit to my feelings. And, and it seems small in the moment, but just every day it builds like a callus to doing the right things. Yeah. And then doing the wrong thing feels weird. It's like when you eat healthy for a long time, then you go and have, you, you know, your hot Cheeto, Funyun, whatever you yeah, mix that night, up, it, it messes you up. Like you're all jacked up. Yeah. And it's not that the snack was that bad. It's just your body's not not accustomed to dysfunction. Yeah. Anymore. And, and so that's the whole like leveled up. Like you're supposed to be leveling up, not going back. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think if we can identify like what's my next level, because every level is uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. The, every every step, every place that God calls you to. I, I think you posted something the other day. It's like it's outside of your comfort zone. 
But like God calls us to to live a life of faith for a reason. Because if it didn't, I need faith to sit down in this chair. I just sat down. Right. Because I've sat down a million times. So it's like I just trusted the chair was gonna hold me up. But like we're called to live by faith and not by sight. So the life that He calls us to live should require some sort of faith, which is like pretty scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like. But but that's the life he's we're we're supposed to be living is a life full of faith. So we need other people around us to call out like the 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 water walking Peter inside of us. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but it sounded good. I like it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always sounds good when you talk about Peter walking on water. That's man. right. That's right. Um, but yeah, dude. So the, so the first thing is like yeah, that conviction. Yourself, set, set yourself now. Two practical things, and let's get into how to have the conversations with different people in your in your life where you can start to be more impactful and kind of get them on the same thought process that you've got, right? Given that you're providing value, this isn't manipulation. Right. This isn't I'm trying to get this person to see it in a way that's going to harm them. No, no, no. This is only, this is with the prerequisite that that what you're going to, to help lead them to is going to bless them, provide them significant value. It has to be that or else it's going to destroy you. So, but the first thing is, is write some affirmations out, right? Of who, the next level version of you is, right? We, as a parent, as a spouse, every role you've got, write that down as a person of faith. Like, like put that down, write it, read it, and repeat it over and over Come on, again. you're preaching, bro. Right? And so if you do that, all of a sudden then things change. And so first thing is affirmation. Second thing I'd say is visualization. So actually start to visualize that person and what they would do. Because again, it's so easy to be moved by just what we're accustomed to. Yeah. I love what you said. And, um, you know, your, your body's just kind of dictating you. Well, that's the flesh, right? Like we're called to renew our mind. With a renewed mind, our mind now dictates our body. And so we're now going to move differently. But if you start to visualize that next level version of yourself, now it's easier to be moved into that step opposed to the one that just seems so familiar because yeah. of what you did yesterday, the day before, and the day before. And so proper visualization, because your brain doesn't know the difference between what you imagine and what you experience, that's a big deal. So now you start to build that conviction just through the visualization. And um, the truth is, that's one of our superpowers, right? 100%. Like nobody gets, no, a dog doesn't have a vision of its future, right? right. A dog does what it does. A bee creates hives, right? Like, like silkworms create silk, like that's what they do. And so, our superpower is that we are imagined to imagine, right? So we have this visualization where today, regardless of where you're at right now, and you might be discontented, you might be happy, regardless of those two, there's a higher level. Yep. In order to get there, it's going to require you to use your superpower to create a new future. You got to sit in the present with a new vision. And so I think that's a big, big deal. Now, moving into the communicating um, with people. So for one, and I'm going to kind of connect it a little bit to, to life insurance sales because I did it forever. Um, you know, you have to be so convicted in the value that you're providing the person and really caring about them that all of a sudden your eyes shift from you to them. Yeah. Because just like the car sales guy, right? Like he, you go on the lot and the reality is we don't know what situation he's in. Right. Like, dude, he might be behind his mortgage. Mm -hmm. He might he'd be like, dude, I got to make this sell. And what does that lead to? It leads to commission, bro. Cause it's about you. Like I got to do, I got to, like, if I don't, like I'm, this ain't going to be good. I got, I got kids to feed. Well, in that state, you might be right. That might be the truth. But in that frame of mind, you ain't going to help nobody right. and you're going to lose the house. And so you've got to be intentional to kind of turn that light switch off and turn the one on that's got your eyes fully focused on that person. And so I think if you're in any kind of sales, and it could be just to, maybe it's an, a, a conversation that you're going to have with your spouse where you're like, this is going to be, you know, conflict. I need to address this. This is a situation. And you guys all know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. It could be anything. Um, like I got to have this financial talk. There's been too much spent, whatever it is, right? Um, it could be with the kids. Like I need to have this, this heart to heart conversation. And you know, and sometimes when the, the weight of, of that conversation is so heavy, Right. We just go into it without any kind of forethought and it doesn't end the way it needs to end. I mean, an important conversation, man, that can lead to a completely different outcome. Yeah. It's it's there's some crucial conversations we can have. But I think it's important when you go into those conversations to step out of the emotion. That emotion could be maybe the person you're talking to has done some things that caused you some resentment, some unforgiveness, some hatred. It could be yeah, about you, you've got an emotion that's that's tied to your struggle, you're in this survival mode, neither one of those emotions are going to lead to fruit, right? And so if you can sit and kind of do like a, almost like a, a one minute goal setting, like, let me go ahead in my mind and kind of put their shoes on. Like, how are they seeing it? What is it looking like for them? What's important to them? What do they value? And then you kind of sit there and say, okay, this is what they value. Now, 
I need to relate and connect with that person first and foremost. Because if I can't meet them where they're at, I can never take them to where I want them to go. First, it takes us finding the same destination on the map. <laughs> or I'm like typing in going to, to you know, Barstow, but I don't even know where I'm at. I'm not going to get there. I got to know where I'm currently at. And so I think that's a big, big deal to sit there and kind of get out of yourself and ask yourself, like, what value can I provide? So in life insurance, I'd sit there and and I would visualize, like, what if I knew this person wasn't coming home tomorrow? And it could be the same thing like with the church, right? Like if I don't have this conversation, maybe I, I don't want to have it, but what if I don't have it? And this is the last conversation conversation they're going to have. And this, their eternal life is on, on, on the yeah. line. So I would sit there and think like, what if I knew Bob wasn't coming home? Like I was certain, like, what if I just like God spoke to me and said, he's not coming home tomorrow. Right now, when I go in, no matter what he says, I'm not going to feel like defensive. I'm not going to come across like combative. I'm not going to, you know, try to sell for my own benefit. If I knew that, and I'm a person that cares for people, I'm going to go in there and, and it ain't going to be pressure to get them to move. It's going to be passion. Right. And so I would visualize like if I knew that now I would connect with them, right? I'm going to connect with them right when I get in the door. I'm going to be able to, you know, um, have a conversation where I build sincere rapport because I value him. Not, not. Uh, you know, disingenuous rapport where I'm trying to make the sale like your guy, right? It's no, I'm going to really care about him because I love people. I value people. And so you kind of unpack that. What it does is it helps you step out of yourself. And now when you start to connect with that person, you've got uh, really the, the the foundation laid to really build that, that house on, right? Meaning that you're going to yeah get them to where they need to get to. So I mean, I think, I, well, I think these, I mean, you said so much, so many good things. I think the hardest part, and I know for me, is like, and most people would probably say the same, is like getting out of yourself. So, so like, because the truth is, we think everyone's thinking about us, but in reality, they're thinking about them. Yeah. The same way we're thinking about us. So our thoughts are fixed on us 99.9% .9 of the time. And so in any situation, we're thinking about, okay, how does this affect me? How am I looked at? How do I move forward from this conversation? So the problem for most people is getting their eyes off of them and putting yeah. it on the other person. So I think it starts like just even going back to what we we're talking about, like affirmation of who you are and, and who you're called to be. And, and as, as a Christian, right, we're, we're called to serve as a leader. We're called to serve as an entrepreneur. You're called to serve as a, yeah. a pastor. You're called to serve as a, as a dad. You're called to serve. And so if that's our first, like if our identity is a servant, mm -hmm. then like we got to get like what you said, get our emotions, get our feelings, get our ourself off of us and think about them. I, I love I, I don't love it. I think it's funny when I talk to salespeople and they go like, um, I'll, I'll give you the same deal as I was going to give my brother or my dad or my parents or my, and I'm like, well, I, I get why you're saying that. It's because like, you're trying to hook me up, but like, right. dude, if you're just trying to do the best for me, just do the best for me. I'm not asking for a deal. Just right. do what's best for me. I'm not asking you to not make money because anyone who like, I, I want the sales got to make money. Like you got to feed your family. You got to, if, if you're providing a good service. So it's like, but I just think it's funny that how we'll treat <clears throat> some people different and other people better because of a relationship or whatever. When in reality, the truth is we should all be treating everyone as if they were like family because we genuinely care about them. And we genuinely, that is someone's mom yeah. or dad or brother or sister. And, and so you, I mean, you said a whole lot, which is amazing, but as a, as any leader, I mean, if you're transferring thought, you're, you're, you're passionate about what you're trying to convey to them and convince them of something. Cause that's really what you're trying to do is convince yeah. them that, that where you're leading them is not only best for them, but best for those who follow them, best for the whole situation, right? It's a win-win, not a win-lose. Yeah. And, and so if you really genuinely believe that you're leading them to the right place, then I and you have the right motive because when you have the right, like if the root is good, then the fruit is good. Yeah. You know, but if the root, like if your motive is messed up, then the fruit is going to be messed up. And, and so if you have a good motive and reason to get them there, then I think most people can see and, and value authenticity. Like that's how I always try to lead. I don't try to be anything that I'm not. Yeah. So I think number one, uh, it reminds me of like the, um, like eight mile, right? So they're doing the rap battle. Yeah. yeah. They're like going against each other and he just like puts it all out there. Like, dude, this is so I am. I'm white. I live in the trailer, like all this stuff. Yeah. Right. I think for me anyways, in sales, it's like, Hey, this is who I am. Um, I've been doing this for, for three years. I dude, I don't have it all figured out. We're not perfect around here but I care about you. I love you. Like, I'm going to give you everything that I have. I'm going to show you what I think to be the right way. And I think pe people resonate with authenticity, with realness. When people try to be something they're not, people recognize it and call it out. 
and like mm-hmm. the little spidey sense goes off like yeah this yeah, guy's good. snake oil salesman right here yeah you know so like that that's at least for me that everyone's a little bit different but like that's what's worked for me you know in leadership when i was doing commission sales i was like and, and sometimes the reality is you lose sales that way too because you're like ah, i want a guy that's more experience yeah, yeah. i want to be this guy's first sale but it's like it is what it is i can only be me right you know um but it, at least for me it, it gives a sense of like um like there, there's, I got to get better, but at the same time, like I'm still being authentic. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I mean, I think it's a like the, the, it's a cliche quote, but everybody's heard it. But people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, it's true. And like, dude, if you can now, people hear that and they know it. And I think because it's so you know stated and, and known that they lose the applicability of it and kind of asking yourself like, how well am I doing with that? But I believe that that takes the stress off you too. Like in the beginning, man, like you start anytime you're getting into the sales, like I said, it could be just a conversation with somebody, you know, it's so easy to overthink stuff and think you need to know more. I need to figure this out to have this conversation. I don't want to look dumb. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all an ego, right? It's you. It's basically you forecasting a a future version of yourself. And now that future version of yourself is not going to feel good. Well, that's ego. Right. And so, but if the way you kind of get away from ego and, and you have this like sense of like, just going out there and serving people is just saying, I just care about the person. And I'm, I'd always say it to myself when I was calling families brand new, do 19, and I'm calling these six year olds talking about financial services. In my mind, I, I would convince myself and I'd ruminate on this thought that there's nobody better to help that person yeah. because I care about them. That's right. Like I would look at my character like I'm, I'm an integrous person. I'm going to serve that person. I'm going to go the extra mile. Nobody goes the extra mile like I will. I will find a solution. And if I can't find a solution, I'm going to be resourceful. I'm a resourceful person. So I'm going to find the person that knows the answer, the best person to give that answer. And I sincerely care about this individual. And it's not about me. It's about them. And so I'm going to go out there and, and nobody better to help them. And, and because of that, man, my confidence grew. And most people, above anything, they want to deal with a, an authentic person and a confident person. Yep. When it comes to that, and um, I was talking to Frank about this a little while ago, that you know, in today's society, because it's so artificial, the the, the beautiful thing about that is, because people say, man, it's terrible, like how artificial the world is. Well, well, the beautiful thing and that bad thing is that authenticity shines that much brighter. Yeah, hundred percent. So if you're authentic, dude, you're going to be, you know, head and shoulders above anybody else that is artificial might have this skill set. And I remember being able to go out there and not have a skill skill set. In the first year, be a top 10 producer in the insurance industry. And there's no question you can say, well, that 19-year-old, man, he was so, so skillful. It's like, right. dude, right. I was 19, man. I, I was still right. sagging my pants and listening to Tupac, you know, smoking Newport Shorts and probably at the time, dude. Yeah. But dude, like, I, I, exactly. You know, but I was convincing myself 100%. of these things, right? And so when I went in, you know, the person wasn't like so caught up on that. They were like, Almost just like, man, this person has a heart for me. Mm-hmm. And one of my affirmations was, man, I'm going to touch a heart before I ask for a hand. And so how can I touch a heart? How can I connect with them? How can I value them? How can I love them? And um, and everything about that now, it's not, well, what do I say? What's the right rebuttal? I'm not saying that stuff's not important because I would teach that at a high level. But but it was – is is what I'm saying rooted in me caring for that person? Well, but like that that's all the technical stuff, right? The objection handling, but like – yeah, you can learn it. You can learn. Anyone could learn a script, right. right? Anyone could learn timing of a script. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like the the what? Who are you as a person? Like, what's your character? Why are you even in this? Is it is it just about the money or just about getting your way? Like, we're trying to help the inside so so your life holistically is better, right? And um, I, I had some good. Uh, oh, so so talk about this too. The follow up because I think that's where a lot of salespeople miss it is the follow up. Yeah. So like after you close the sale, I think another way that to show that you actually care is by following up with that person. Sure. And, and like making sure if it's in insurance, making sure that the the underwriting's done and, and all, all the back end stuff, right? For me in, in janitorial sales, like you'd get so people get so surprised when I show up like 30 days after I've closed a contract yeah. to do like a like I call it an internal expe- inspection. Well, I'll go there and I'll point out all the the things that I'm seeing that my crew's missing because usually it's the other way around. Usually like, hey, your crew missed this, this, yeah. this, and, and they're trying to you know, give me all the complaints. So I'll go in there as a courtesy to them and say, Hey, I just want to do an internal inspection. They're blown away. Like, Oh, you actually care about yeah. cleaning our bathrooms. It's like, yeah. So, so I think where many people miss it, like they say they care and they do care, 
but like to go above and beyond. It's just like simple follow up, like a simple text, a simple phone call, yeah. a simple written handwritten letter, uh, an email. All those things matter so much in uh, in sales. Yeah, well, dude, I think it's uh, what you're saying is like exceeding expectation, yeah. right? And so like that's how you create these raving fans, yeah. and it's no different than like you know the church. Like somebody goes in. And they have an expectation. Now, their expectation is derived from a prior experience or whatever. Now, you don't have the control over the person's expectation when you're meeting with them, right? And that's just the reality. It could be in any facet. The person is going to have these pre-formed like formed expectations that have been derived from the past experiences. And so no different than when I went into a client's house. Like I wasn't probably the first person that they would maybe put in the salesperson category. Right. Now, that category for them it would mean different for each person. To them, it might be like, dude, this guy's gonna be pushy. He's gonna try to give me something that I don't want or or, or 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 I need. And maybe that's because the other person, they got something and they felt like, man, I got taken advantage of. Like, I didn't really need this. I made a bad decision. And people's greatest fear is making the wrong choice, right? Making the bad decision and being the only person that made the wrong decision. Yeah. A bunch of other people made it, they're like, ah, but if they're the only one. And so I knew that when I stepped in the door that I couldn't control whatever expectation that they had. But from that moment forward, I had full control to change the expectation That's based good. off every word I would say. Now, if I knew who I was, first and foremost, like I was convicted in who I was, now everything I say, I'm going to show them who I am. So now all the words I say, how I say it, the way I say it, it's rooted in caring and love. They're going to start to see me not as a salesperson, but as like a field underwriter, right? Somebody that's just there to guide, direct, or help them, or just maybe a, an assistant buyer, if we want to call that, yeah. right? So I'm not a salesperson because people love to buy. They get hate to be sold. So everything about what I'm saying now, it's going to help show them who I am, but I had to first know who I am. And Come then on. even in the objections where you would look at it as like a negative, I would use those objections to grow who I was. So I already know who I am. I've showed them who I am. And now even in the objections and negative things, those are going to be used to grow who I am. And so by the end of it, now this perspective of, of who I am, what I'm doing there for them, it's now exceeded expectation. Now I've got a person that's going to purchase. Um, the exceeding expectation is on the back end, like you showing back up, they didn't expect that. Right. A text, they might not expect that. So the one thing each person can do, and it could be even with your spouse, right? Like if you start, you do something today, like send a nice text message, right? You show up with some like edible arrangements or something, and you exceed expectation, you're about to create a Raven fan. I don't know about you, man. I like a Raven <laughs> fan in my bedroom about after 10, right? Let's go. You know, so it's, uh, it, I don't know what you're into, best what I'm into. But um, it's the same thing with the client, right? I want to create a Raven fan. And then what happens is that this, well, whatever you're investing in marketing and spending, that's that's fixed. And then whatever you're selling, that amount, typically the numbers are the numbers, they're gonna be about the same. That margin is profit. But when you create a raving fan, your expenses don't go up, but your but your income does, which ex that's profit. And so you'd have clients that would reach out all the time because I'd go back out and do reviews of the clients, you know, policies. I would, I would add like emergency response system. So I'd, I'd put a referral or, or a, a, a contact list in place where if something happened, they other people had my information to call. I would do all these little things. I do RX prescription, these different benefits, help them with the will that nobody else would do. And so now when I call back and want to and have a conversation about another value add I can give them, they're a lot more open and receptive to it. And then when they're at a family barbecue and somebody brings up whatever you're selling, dude, they're going to be eager to tell them because they're like, you got to experience what I experienced because yeah. that experience exceeded my expectation. That's good, bro. You know? You must have ran like a sales organization or something. Yeah, a little bit. Thousands of people across <laughs> yeah. the country. It's oh, pretty hey, good, dude. Look, look, look. It's look. good stuff, man. It's a master class. All Wait. around, dude. Good stuff. You're the master class, bro. It's good to be on here every week with Absolutely. you, dude. Well, guys, hey, share this, like, subscribe. Uh, we love you. And by the way, we'd love to hear what specifically you want to have unpacked, right? Um, we don't pretend to be great at everything, and uh, we suck at most things, but <laughs> certain things we want to speak to. And so if those are the things that you want to give to us, we want to be able to you know, come alongside, talk about it, brainstorm about it, and um, we don't just kind of get on here like – just like loftily, like, hey, whatever. We want to be intentional to serve you and help you each and every week. So, Brandon, I love you, dude. Love you, Guys, let's go out there and make it a big week. Be strong, stay steadfast, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.